All right, I have an iPhone 7 here that's in a boot loop. Like I was saying, it's in a boot loop, so I'm going to plug it in, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So you see the Apple logo, and the ammeter is at 0.91. Looks like it's charging, 0.72, goes up to 1 amp, and then it dies, and then it starts right over again. So this is a pretty fast boot loop, and uh, like every other idiot out there, um, <laughs> I replaced TriStar, which I don't know. Uh, it's the dumbest thing ever, but uh, TriStar seems to be the first thing that I mean. It does fail often, but you know, in an instance like this, I'm 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 probably about ninety ninety nine percent sure that TriStar is not going to fix a problem like this. You know, it's just not. Um, so the history of this thing is that um, they were doing a they were doing a, a charge port repair, which um, I guess that's another reason why I replaced TriStar is because, you know, why did they replace the charge board, right? I mean, most people replace charge board because there's charging problems. So, that's another stupid reason why I did TriStar. So, I did TriStar and obviously didn't fix anything. Um, I inspected the entire board. Everything looks really, really clean. You know, it looks like it was, it was, yeah, I mean, there doesn't look like there's too much damage on it. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you under a microscope, but this is what I found. Fast boot loop. Um... Usually something wrong with the CPU. Uh, the question is what is wrong with the CPU. So, seeing that they mess with the charge port, you know, naturally I, you know, take all the foam off around the sides here and just inspect the board. I mean, almost always visually, it's going to give you probably the most clues as to what's going on, you know. And then you kind of look at the symptoms, and then you say, okay, it's fast boot loop and probably not TriStar. Then you kind of like, um, you know, base your decision on on all the facts. Um, so here's something that I missed actually. I mean I I was I looked pretty like I, I desoldered all the shield and everything and just kinda probe base band, backlight, display, which is what I normally do, back on pins on the connector and uh, nothing was out of normal. Nothing was out of whack. Uh, so this is what I missed right here. Um, so let's zoom in and then I'll unblur it so you guys can see the so the question is, is this the problem right here? That's a resistor that's obviously cracked, and it, it makes sense. You know, after a, after a charge port repair, they're they're probably too slipped and, and pop that thing, and it's a resistor. So so what I do is I just go to ZXW Tools and let's see what this resistor does. Okay. Um, so this resistor is here, and if we click on this, it says PP1B8. And and this leads to the I2C3 line AP. So this is basically a data line to the um, to the CPU. What does it do? Well, I don't really know at this point what it does. But so we can kind of investigate just a little bit further. We can go in the schematics as well and 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 really figure out what it does. Um, so I guess based just based on this, we can kind of see what it does. So I2C mic. So this is a mic a mic I2C line. Yeah, it's my name. Um, okay, so it's a mic I2C line. So the question is, can something like this make the phone boot loop? <laughs> one one bad I2C line, can it make it boot loop? Well, we're going to figure that out. And you can see it leads to the CPU, okay? So we're going to figure this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this resistor here. And I don't know, maybe it'll fix it. Who knows? Um, who knows? Yeah, who knows? So I think maybe ongoing, you know, if this does fix it, then we'll have to just, you know, if you see a symptom like this, then I think we have to go through all the I2Z lines and, well, see, that's a the problem. There's so many I2Z lines that, you know, it's almost impossible to check them all. But I guess, you know, if you're doing data recovery or something like that, then maybe it's not horrible. Uh, uh, but for a normal job, um... Ah oh, man, it's just a very time consuming thing, you know. Uh so anyways, let me go get a resistor, harvest a resistor from the donor board. And then it looks like it's kinda of like not clear, right? Maybe my thing is tilted. Okay, let me harvest a um resistor and then I'll come back. Okay, so I have my little teeny teeny tiny resistor. It's a two point two K uh zero one zero zero five resistor, which if you don't have these, you can get them from a donor board or you can kind of uh, stock up on them from DigiKey. They're probably really, really cheap. Okay, so I guess let's let's give it a go, man. Let's see if this is the problem or not. Um, 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's very possible. It is I2C line, which would cause a boot loop like this. So I guess it's very possible, but that's cr it'd just be crazy if this little resistor, you know, caused wreaked this havoc on this phone that I've spent a few days on already. Uh, but we will see. We will see. All right. We're gonna explore it together, and so I'm gonna hook up the display, connect the battery. I'm not gonna connect anything else. Like all this stuff is disconnected. The, the cameras and stuff like that. I just want the Wi-Fi, the front camera. Pretty much everything is disconnected except for essentials. Okay, so now I'm gonna boot it up. Let's see what happens. All right. All right. 0.45.27.92. Apple logo comes up. 0.91. I hope to say boom, but well, oh hey, what's up? So that was it. That was crazy. All right. So, oh man, that's crazy. Okay, so one resistor I2C line causes boom. boom. Well, I mean, all right. So it's very possible that sometimes maybe the resistor is like cracked or something like that, and it doesn't work, right? So I guess the question is, how do we isolate the problem? quickly, right, without measuring every I2C line, right? How do we do that? I don't know. I don't I don't really have an answer to that right now, but um but I think I think that'll solve a lot of issues if we can uh expedite the repair time in something like this. Um I mean one little resistor brought this phone down, you know, and you know the only clue that we had was that they, they did a charge port repair. That was the only clue we had. And and that was it, man. Uh, so, you know, I guess how often do you see maybe somebody drops a phone or something like that, and it may maybe just kind of makes the resistor not work or just kind of have a cold joint, you know? Like, how do you solve that problem quickly? <laughs> I mean, it's hard. Um, so, uh, it's it's sometimes it's frustrating, you know. But this something like this is very rewarding when you when you figure something like this out, especially after you spend a few days on it, you know, and and. Uh, but um but yeah i mean one one little resistor brought this phone down and i was i was really really close to just returning this thing i you know i told the guy i was like hey man i'm going to i'm going to replace the tristar on it and if that doesn't work then i'm going to send it back you know and and just as i was about to call it a day on it i was like okay let's look it over one last time and and i saw this little resistor that was nicked you know uh so it was very, you know, this phone is very close to to death, <laughs> very very close to death. Um, but we salvaged it. Um, so, how many times have you encountered an instant like this where uh, you called it a day on a phone and and you know all it was was a stupid resistor, right? I mean, <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you how many failed videos I have here sitting here uh, where I couldn't solve it. And uh, well, one of these days, I'm gonna upload some of these videos that I made that doesn't make it to YouTube. <laughs> and uh, maybe it'll be like bloopers, micro soldering bloopers. That's what I'll call it. Um, anyways, so uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. I mean, I think this is we're gonna call this one a day. We're gonna send this back to a customer. Unfortunately, his data is gone, which I don't think he cared about because I think he was gonna. I think he was gonna do it anyways. I think he was. I think he had already reset, tried to reset it, and I think the error. I think it was like error four zero zero five. I think. I mean, it just kind of failed. It failed to um, re uh, recognize the phone. So, which I think is common with I two C problem. Um, okay, so this is done. Uh, thanks for watching again. Always use your eyes as probably the number one thing. Um, you know, always inspect the logic board first because that's probably going to give you the most information. You know, get the history, inspect it with your eyes, and then and then go from there. Always, uh, it's going to save you a lot of time and uh, it's going to help you solve a lot of problems. So, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm guessing that you stumbled upon our YouTube channel because um, one, you messed up someone's device and you're trying to learn how to fix it. Two, your a repair shop that uh, you, you, maybe you're sending stuff out right now and you want to capitalize on on repairing these things yourself um, or three you're just a hobbyist uh, looking to learn how to do this thing because it, it's interesting to you
And I just want to say that this is pretty much how I started this thing. Um, I I was repairing screens at one point, and I broke someone's device. And this was back in 2016, and and I had to fix it. And there was nobody really doing this at that time, and I didn't really want to pay anybody how to do it. So I went to YouTube, just like you, and watched some videos. And here we are, two years later, almost. I think it's almost three years later, and and here we are. Um, I am the owner and operator of microsoldering.com and I just want to talk to, to you guys a little bit about this course that we have. It's um it's on Udemy. Um we are we're selling it on Udemy for $150. It is a full curriculum and as you can see we got pretty good ratings. Um it's four hours of content and it goes over everything from uh just the basic building blocks of a logic board, um to how to how to repair the three most common problems touch charge backlight and then it it uh, tells you how to set up we have a bonus section here it tells you how to use diode mode how to set up your tools and equipment and then we go into data recovery and we're going to be adding more stuff to it over the past uh, over the next few months here and it's it's going to be great um, and we're going to launch a new website and all that stuff so it's on Udemy for 150 dollars. Um, we have it. If you go through our website, microsoldering.com, you can get 50 bucks off. Just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, and then click on the full curriculum, and you'll get it for for 99.99. Okay. So um, if you're like me and you want to learn how to do this stuff, this is probably the best way to do it from the comfort of your own desk, um, and you can do it today. And you'll have lifetime access, and you'll get a certificate of completion from Udemy after you're done. So and if you have any questions, just go to the forum here and you can post a question and I will personally answer every question that you have. Thank you for watching.